Good afternoon to you, the world's finest social community, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Steve, and you're watching Bushcraft with Steve Outdoors. Hope you're all well. Now then, ladies and gents, earlier this year I attended an event held annually over here in the UK called the Bushcraft Show. The Bushcraft Show is all things outdoors, nature, bushcraft, wild camping, all good things like that. During my time at the Bushcraft Show, I had the great pleasure of speaking to a young knife maker named Josh. Now, Josh is a very, very skilled individual. Not only did he own and run his own forestry school, he also teaches bushcraft skills, and on top of that, he is a master knife maker. Josh has been making his knives for 15 years, and in the last two years, he has been selling them as a business. His main knives are a Woodlow style knife he calls the Evo Pro, and the one we're looking at today is his Leshy model. So here is the knife in question, ladies and gents. This is the Leshy. And there's two things that immediately excite me about this knife. Number one is this is my first knife made in AEBL steel. The second is this is my first Puko style knife. And the Puko style knife has been used traditionally by the Sami people and this goes back all the way to Vikings which gives me that warm fuzzy feeling inside. I would also like to remark on just how incredibly sharp this came to me um, and to demonstrate that to you guys I'm going to get one of my sexy drumsticks out and do the shaving test. Follow me. So I hope you can see that there ladies and gents. Um, there is hair there. Let's do the shaving test. Oh, body farm, body farm for you. I've just realised that's um, tan packs and not razors. Plenty of hair there. So before we get to testing, I'd just like to go over a couple of specs on this particular knife. So the knife is constructed from 3mm AEBL stainless steel, which is now the preferred steel for knife makers in the bushcraft community. It has a sort of a stone wash finish and this is the finish when it comes out of heat treated and then we've got a polished 23 degree true scandy grind there which again is absolutely razor sharp we have g10 liners and to complement them we have a lovely curly ash handle if the camera would like to focus with stainless loveless bolts there lanyard hole and i would like to remark on the actual handle of the knife this is um, designed by Josh to be deeper, to fit in the palm more comfortably, but we do have the classic Woodlow Coke bottle shape there, but again much deeper in the scales, which is again very, very comfy and ergonomic. So now on to the test. And how we're going to test this now today, ladies and gents, first of all, we are going to carve a small cooking apparatus, maybe using something like hazel, and we can use that to hang a billy pot over the fire. Then we are going to make a one stick fire using the knife and this should be a good test to utilize all of its um, cutting capabilities. So let's crack on. Um, we're going to harvest a section of this hazel and we're going to use the knife to do so. Um, and we'll check how sharp this blade actually is. So this is around, I'd say an inch in diameter. So I will say this blade glides really, really nice through that hazel. And I do like the sound and the feel of cutting through hazel as well. It's very, very satisfying. So that is uh, pretty much done there now. There we go. Just a tip for you, ladies and gents, when you are harvesting hazel, it's much more generous to the plant you're taking it from. If you, When you're making the cut to tidy the branch up, to cut it at an angle, that way the rain drops off, doesn't pool on top, um, and that's much nicer to the tree. Not quite heavy enough to be an effective chopper, but still absolutely razor sharp. Perfect for taking the little uh, spindly branches off and just tidying that up. And a little bit of curling. Feathering. 
is a fine art this. Um, it's just finding the right angle on that Scandi grind and then just using each new ridge that's created every time you go down. This does not cure very well, green hazel, but it's still producing nice fine shavings. And the razor sharpness of this blade carries on right to the tip where you can produce really really fine small curls which are the curls we use to obviously ignite the tin, tinder stick with the ferrocerium rod or fire steel. Now another fantastic quality of this knife is the extremely sharp 90 degree spine which enables you again to create really fine shavings which will easily and readily take the spark from a fire steel and that is extremely satisfying to do very very little resistance there and the blade is a very very nice length as well very comfortable it's not wobbling around in your hand um, like you get with some larger survival or bushcraft knives this is totally manageable and extremely controllable and as you can see there some very very fine curls there easily take a spark Now ladies and gents, on to the one stick fire test. Now the Lesh's cutting surface is around three to three and a quarter inch. And generally the Poco style knife is again uh, aimed at the carving and light general tasks around camp. But to be considered a well-rounded knife, it does need to be able to at least um, batten to some degree. That's my opinion anyway. So here we have a piece of seasoned ash. It's around three inch. So we've got about a quarter inch here to play with to batten through but to aid it on its way we are going to use a wedge because this is typically what you'd use with this combination unless you've got an axe then you can go that route also so let's find the smallest thinnest part around here So that blade and the spine is about five mil inside there. So now we'll go with the wedge. And that will help to open this up a little bit so we can retrieve the knife, which isn't happening yet. There we go. So the aim of this test is to create a fire using one piece. That is the first cut. Another way to achieve the same method, if your round is larger than your actual cutting surface of your blade, is generally just pairing the round sections like so. And that will decrease the diameter of the log. And then when it's a more manageable size, you can 
cross section that and batten straight through. It absolutely glides through that wood and this is seasoned ash. A bit punky and wet there so we'll get rid of that. Um, again I didn't mention before but this blade is hardened to 59 HRC so we shouldn't get any chipping on there um, and that edge should be quite forgiving. So going off past experience, ash is not the best wood for curls and feathers, but we'll give it a go. And if we can get a few, just to help us along. Look at them. Absolutely beautiful. And again that knife just absolutely slides through that wood. And we can uh, determine the angle of the curls as well by raising, raising and lowering the tip of that blade as you can see but absolutely glorious I must say I'm not just saying this I've got to say this now this is probably the best experience I've had feathering curls with a knife absolutely that is absolutely phenomenal well done Josh well done absolutely sublime and then we get some nice tiny curls to the back of that. Just small enough for the fire steel to catch. And hopefully we will not need any extra tinders to get this going. Any of that fall off, keep them dry because they burn as well. Don't worry about them falling off. But, um, wow. Right to the tip, no resistance. Just beautiful curls now then ladies and gents any bushcraft knife worth its salt must have the ability to scrape a ferrocerium rod or the fire steel now although this is a modern technology uh, the Sami people using this knife would probably use a high carbon steel variant and they would most likely use a piece of flint on the spine of the knife to produce sparks onto char cloth or some sort of natural tinder but with modern knives we have a 90 degree spine and this is also one of Josh's fire steels um, which is antler, very nice and I think very very matching um, very in keeping with the knife so let's test its scraping capabilities so absolutely no issues there not that I thought there would be Absolutely fantastic sparks created by that 90 degree spine and that is a quality fire steel as well. You can actually smell it and I've not smelt that for a while using my existing or my current fire steel so um, great sparks off that as well, nice one. Right ladies and gents let's get on to the fire. So this is what we have procured from that one piece of ash. So we've got lots of tiny bits of kindling. Um, it is all mashed together because I've done my best effort to keep it dry. So. These will probably go on the fire first. We have some really small ones as well. We have had some rain today and rain means low pressure. So when we're building a fire in wet weather, it's no point trying to build a piddling little flame. We do need to get a well established flame fast. So feathers are probably a way to go um, and keep it all as dry as possible really. That is pretty much all we can hope for. But if we don't manage this, um, you know, there's plenty of material in the wood and we do have our um, stash of tinders as well. I've also picked a few of these off a burnt out campfire. These are just coals, so we can add these on later on as an extender, just to help uh, the, the fire build. So we've got plenty of our curls. Did these off camera. Lovely curls there produced by that knife. There we go. That looks good to go.
little spit for today's food and then get a coffee on. So this is another piece of the hazel um, we harvested before. So we're going to take this off to around here, maybe a bit more. And then we can use the crook there to rest the spit on. We don't need to remove the bark on the actual crook, um, but we will remove the bark off the actual spit where the food is because, as we know, bark harbours bacteria. So we're going to go with the back of the spine first. Any knots. Can swiftly remove them. We're thinning this down a little bit because this is just going to decimate the, potato, the uh, tomatoes. <laughs> that should do us. So what have we got in the larder today? We've got a lovely fresh red pepper, a nice piece of Spanish chorizo and some cherry tomatoes, tomatoes. So we're just going to feed these onto the spit and get them over the heat on the fire. Let's crack on. And again, the Leshy is a fantastic food processing knife. Um, at three mil, it lends itself well to slicing as well. Um, a few of you voiced your concerns yesterday when I was peeling veg at the camp. <laughs> I know when to stop, um, I'm not one to exert any force using a knife, if I can feel a resistance you stop straight away, simple. So we're going to cut this into four square chunks I think, just feed this on as is. So we'll go pepper, piece of sausage, Oh, this smells absolutely delicious. Very nice. And again, slices lovely through. It's got some nice big chunks off there. I think four should do us. Not being too greedy. I'm more thirsty today near the fire um, than hungry. And then a cherry tomato. I'm not sure whether this spit is going to be a little bit too thick for these. I'm just going to squirt everywhere. Just. Just managed it. And then repeat the process. Might look a mess, but I'm sure it is going to taste absolutely delightful. Try and get the biggest tomato we can there. Right on you go. Take the sticker off this piece, that would help. And I think that's actually a, a nice looking just put that over near the fire now. Right, ladies and gents, we are drastically losing the light in this woodland here. So whilst I enjoy my delicious kebab, which is now cooked. Oh, very nice. Let's say I go over my initial thoughts on the leshy from Feed Woods. It 
So, my initial thoughts on the Leshy from Josh Feared Woods after my testing in the woodland today. I've got to say that is an absolutely beautiful uh, cutting tool and I've had some really, really gorgeous knives on this channel and this, ladies and gents, is definitely up there with the best of them. This has enabled me to create curls like I've never done before um, and it is still, after all that, absolutely razor sharp. It feels just as sharp as before, I started, before we went to work with it. Um, there is very little wear on that polished edge there and again the AEBL is a stainless steel so you don't have to worry about rusting on that and it's remarkable just how comfortable that knife is to hold in the end. Josh has done a great job with them scales and his profile for his knives are very slim along the tang there as you can see and deep in the scales which gives it a nice fit in the hand. You've got lots of contact there but your fingers are never wrapped over. Um, overly touching the palm. Full control there, at no point today did I feel fatigue um, doing any of that work and it just feels like part of your hand, it's so light it's very 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 nice, nice weight. It's also a very very nice compact size for a general bushcraft use knife um, and carrying a knife of this size does give you a reason to carry a companion tool and I would recommend something like this this is the uh, Grand Falls Books Kuban Axe, or the Carved Bowl Axe, and that is just a perfect combination there. Um, in the past I've used larger survival knives like the Folk Neven S1XB, and a lot of the time with that knife it's like 6mm stock, so twice the width for the spine on this. Um, and that thing is a tank, and it can do some serious chopping, so a lot of the time I've only ever took that knife out, I've never took sort of an axe with it, because I've pretty much done everything with that knife, but it isn't capable of the dexterity and the fine carving control that this knife is. But what this knife has proven to me today is that this is pretty much the jack of all trades. And if you know the rest of that analogy, it goes like this. The jack of all trades, master of none, is always better than a master of one. That meaning you can take a large survival knife that isn't as capable as carving. You can take a small carving knife that isn't as capable as battening, as a larger knife. This one is a well-rounded knife and we've proved that today. Um, you can pretty much carry out any bushcraft task with this knife um, with ease and the use of a couple of wedges as well. But yeah, fantastic, fantastic knife. Now I would like to touch very quickly on the tip of the knife and if the camera would be so kind as to focus on that as you can see there. When Josh contacted me um, he gave me the choice of two of his knives. One was the Evo Pro and one was the Leshy. I chose the Leshy. Um, I have many larger knives. Um, and he explained about the tip. The tip has, has actually been modified on this knife and it's to his standard. He has this on his own personal knife as well. Um, the Leshy is his preferred knife. But as you can see there, there's a very, very slight drop towards the front of the tip. And that is to, to make the tip a bit more robust, really. Right, you absolute goddamn legends. Thank you very much for joining me today. I'm going to wrap the video up there. We are losing the light drastically now and that camera is going to stop focusing on my beautiful face very soon. So, I highly recommend you go and check Feared Woodland Blades out. Josh is an absolute gent and he is a definite master at his craft. This is reflected highly through his wares. I have just found these glasses on the floor. My vision has not changed, should I be worried? Thank you very much for joining me today. Until the next one, you stay safe. And as always, stay crafty. See you again, guys. Bye-bye.